you think that President Trump has started a trade war here, or would you call it a trade dispute, as White House trade advisor Peter Navarro puts it? Well, right now it's a dispute, but nonetheless, it's impacting our markets. In South Dakota, we're looking at significant impacts to soybean prices. Since March 1st, soybean prices are down a buck 45 a bushel. That amounts to a lot of money in South Dakota. China imports, uh, well, they, they take up uh, right now about 25% of the entire soybean market in the United States, 60% of everything that's been exported. So it makes a real impact on some of our agricultural states, South Dakota being one of them. The tit for tat, though, certainly sounds like a trade war to me. I mean, we're talking about another couple hundred billion dollars worth of Chinese goods facing tariffs. Yeah, look, the, the reality is that the president doesn't think we're getting good, uh, fair trade deals over there. There's a lot of people in the United States that feel the same way. We'll allow the, uh, the, the administration time in which to put together their plan and their negotiations, but time is going to start running short, uh, particularly in ag areas where we're looking at this year's production uh, maturing. We're looking at corn crops coming in, soybean crops coming in. And if we don't have stability in this market at some point in the near future, it's going to start impacting our economy. And that's one thing we don't want to have it do. Uh, most certainly in the ag states, there's a lot of support for the president, but they also want to know what his end game is. What does he expect to achieve by this? And can we sustain that type of an impact on the agricultural uh, economies within a, a number of different states? And yet Bloomberg has published a story that these uh, tit for tat, uh, the war, the dispute, or whatever you want to call it, could hurt American companies. Apple, Walmart, GM, Tesla, Starbucks, among the most vulnerable. Doesn't that concern you? It most certainly does. And look, it, it, as we've said now for several months, uh, when you go after China, they're the big dog in this. You should do it from a position of strength. And I think the president understands that. But if you take a look, right now we have a dispute going on with Canada. We've got a dispute going on with Mexico. We didn't get into the TPP, which had 11 other countries representing a half a billion uh, new consumers that we're not doing. And in each case, the White House felt very strongly that they should do individual agreements with each with each country. We don't have a single one done. Let's get some of those done and let's go after China with a, in a position of strength. What we're asking is, is what's the end game? What's the plan? Uh, in the meantime, let's continue to grow this economy. And you can't do that without some stability within the uh, with, with, within the trade markets. Your Senate colleagues have voted to restore these penalties on ZTE. Do you think that the president's deal lets ZTE off the hook? Uh, I, I, it wasn't so much letting ZTE off the hook that concerned me and a number of my colleagues. We're concerned with what ZTE represents as a threat to our national defense. And by that, you know, Kaspersky had relationships with, uh, with the Russian government. We prohibited our government from buying and purchasing Kaspersky equipment. The same thing in this particular case. Our concern is not so much, at least my concern, is not so much the damage that, uh, that ZTE has done. I think the president addressed with a billion dollar fine and then he also addressed with the fact that he wanted the board of directors removed. He wanted an oversight board. I don't have an objection with that, but I do have a concern that we absolutely have to make sure that ZTE equipment at this stage is not being utilized within uh, infrastructure critical to our national security. But doesn't it seem like these issues are getting a little bit muddied, whether ZTE is really a separate case or uh, being used as some sort of chit in this broader trade war slash dispute? Well, I, I, I think in some cases it, it is part of the discussion with regard to trade disputes. It's also a part of the issue that the president would like to be able to use in negotiations with China on other issues, including their relationship with North Korea. So I don't want to tie his hands when he makes a deal with uh, the leaders in China unless it impacts our national security. And that's the one thing that we have real concerns with. Our, are we allowing ZTE to still uh, sell products to uh, uh, infrastructure critical areas in the United States that impact our national defense? My message is, is look, we passed a bill out. Now the president will come in and tell us what he's willing to negotiate with us. The House has got a bill which has got uh, similar types of restrictions in it. Uh, there are some simple modifications that could be done to the Senate bill if we're able to get an agreement with the White House in terms of how we can all agree to move forward. But ZTE simply can't be allowed uh, to sell to, uh, to, to, to the government, to the federal government, uh, 
and particularly to areas that are critical to our to our national defense, the infrastructure areas where telecommunications could be impacted by this organization, which has direct ties to the Chinese government. Is tariffs on $200 billion of additional Chinese goods, is, is that something you support, or is there a middle ground that you would prefer? Well, once again, this is the president negotiating in a style that only he has. Uh, he's put $50 billion in tariffs on, then he put another $200 billion in tariffs on. He suggested that if there's retaliation for that, he'd put another $200 billion on. Heck, he's real close to $450 billion in threats right now on about a $505 billion total uh, imports from China today. So uh, we're getting to the point where there may not be much else we can do with regard to retaliation on, on, uh, on Chinese goods. But look, it's a matter at some point we've got to come to an agreement on how we move forward. And time is of the essence for many of us. We want to see our economy continue to grow. We did the right thing on tax policy. We did the right thing and the administration did the right thing on the 1900 regulations that have been reduced. We're moving in the right direction there. We need a good qualified job force, which we're short on right now. And we absolutely have to have stable trade policies. The sooner we get them, the better. The president wants to be the, uh, the, uh, the person that's able to make fairer trade deals. Right now, we don't have those deals in effect and some of us We'd love to see it start to, to uh, come to fruition.